Hello, Judge Meadow, and welcome to Physics Required Practical 8, in which we're going to be observing the properties of waves in liquids and solids. In part one, we're going to look at the properties of waves in liquids, and for that, we're going to need to use a ripple tank. Let's have a closer look. The ripple tank, then. We'll go from top to bottom. At the top, this is a lamp. Underneath the lamp, we have a shallow container with water in that's about five millimetres deep. If I just knock the side of the ripper tank, you'll be able to see that there's water in there. There is a metal bar that is just touching the surface of the water, and that metal bar is attached to an oscillator. When I switch the ripple tank on, the oscillator will oscillate the metal bar, causing transverse waves to move across the ripple tank in that direction. You can see that the container is actually very shallow and it's got a glass bottom and you can see through that very clearly if I put my hand underneath. Underneath that we have a mirror at an angle and then a white screen on the front. Now, the reason for that is the waves in the tank are actually quite difficult to see and so what we do is we shine light through the waves that reflects off of that mirror and then we will get an image of the waves or a silhouette of the waves on the white screen. It's also pretty clever because that lamp will switch on and off at the same frequency as the waves are generated, meaning that they will appear to be stationary on that white screen, which makes it much easier to measure their wavelength. Finally, we have a controller attached to the oscillator and that allows us to adjust the frequency and to adjust the amplitude of the waves. Now, before we start the experiment, there's one more thing that we've got to do. You'll notice when the image appears on the white screen that it is magnified. And if we're going to measure the wavelengths on the screen, we need to know the magnification of the ripple tank so that we can work out their actual wavelength. In order to figure out the magnification, we are going to take this plastic block. I'm going to measure its actual length then I'm going to place it into the ripple tank and measure its length on the screen. And that will enable us to calculate the magnification of the ripple tank. So, step one, we're going to measure the length of the plastic block. You see that is 10 centimetres. Then we're going to switch the ripple tank on. You'll see the waves on the screen there. We're going to place the plastic block into the ripple tank. So we can see the two ends of the plastic block here and here, and we will measure the length of the plastic block across the screen. And you'll see that it is 25 centimetres on the image. So the actual length of the plastic block was 10 centimetres, and the length of the image was 25 centimetres. So the actual length of the plastic block was 10 centimetres, the length of the plastic block on screen was 25 centimetres. So in order to calculate the magnification of the ripple tank, we see how many times 10 goes into 25. That will give us a magnification of times 2.5. And we will need to use that when we're converting the wavelength that we measure on the screen into the actual wavelength of the water waves that we produce. Now I've calculated the magnification of the ripple tank. I have produced an awesome results table, so I'm ready to start observing my waves in a liquid. Now, before we look at the image on the white screen, I just want you to see when I switch on the ripple tank, we've got it set up at first to oscillate at a frequency of 40 hertz, which I have recorded in the results table. So we're now ready to measure the wavelength of our waves. So I'll switch the ripple tank on and you will see the waves appear on the white screen. In order to reduce any errors that we make in measuring, what we'll actually do is measure the length of a number of waves, say five waves, and then whatever that length comes out to, we will divide by five in order to get the wavelength of one wave. When I switch the ripple tank on, you will see that the waves appear on the screen and as I said before, because of the strobe effect of the light we can make the waves appear stationary, making it easier to measure them. 
I can paste my ruler onto the white screen. We will measure one, one, two, three, four, five wavelengths. So five wavelengths takes us from 16 centimetres to 24 centimetres. So five wavelengths is eight centimetres. We will need to divide that by five to get the wavelength of one wave. So at 40 hertz, we have a measured wavelength of one wave of 1.6 centimetres. But remember that the image there is magnified, so we've got to divide that 1.6 by the 2.5 magnification, giving us the actual wavelength wave as 0.64 centimetres. I've now increased the frequency to 46 hertz, and we're going to go through the same process again. We place our ruler on the screen, we're going to measure the length of five waves, or five wavelengths. That takes us from 15 to 22 centimetres. So the length of five waves at 46 hertz is seven centimetres. Remember, we need to divide that by five again. So at a frequency of 46 hertz, five waves, five wavelengths, sorry, had a length of seven centimetres. So each individual wave had a wavelength of 1.4 centimetres. But again, the image was magnified by 2.5. So if we divide our 1.5 centimetres by 2.5, it gives us an actual wavelength of 0.56 centimetres. We're now at 56 hertz. I'm sure you can hear the difference in the noise of the oscillator. Same process again. The ruler on the screen will count five wavelengths. So five wavelengths is now six centimeters. So we'll take the six centimeters and divide by five again to get the wavelength of just one wave. So 56 hertz, we had a measured length of six centimetres for five wavelengths. So six divided by five wavelengths gives us 1.2 centimetres as the wavelength of one wave. And then remembering that the image on the screen is magnified by times 2.5. So if we divide 1.2 by the 2.5 magnification, then that gives us an actual wavelength of each wave of 0.48 centimetres. We're then going to increase the frequency another two or three times and we can then use the data to calculate the speed of the water waves at each different frequency.